Hey there, Rob Arnold here. Distorted guitars have an inherent fizziness in their upper mid range. The buildup of that fizziness can accumulate over multiple tracks, it can become harsh and tiring to your ears over time. And the thing is, you don't know it until you hear it. And let me show you what I mean and the method I use to eliminate that fizz to achieve better and smoother sounding guitar tracks. In this example, I'll be using a simple parametric EQ in Pro Tools, but you can use any EQ in any DAW and achieve the same results. Although using a parametric EQ makes things a lot easier than using something like a graphic EQ or one without the same type of visual representation. A parametric EQ gives you greater control over the individual bands in the frequency spectrum and how much of an effect your cuts or boosts have on the neighboring frequencies. With an EQ like this, you can paint a wide brush or get extremely surgical with what you're wanting to achieve. Let's take a listen to what I've got going on here. You'll definitely want to be listening on a nice system or headphones to really hear the subtle changes I'll be applying. In this case, I'm simply using stock Apple earbuds that came with an old iPhone because I want to be able to focus on the high end of the audio. If I were using expensive headphones, which commonly accentuate low end, I might not make the best decisions because the low end would dominate the frequency spectrum. I find it's always best to try and mix audio on a well-balanced system, but I've found that when making videos like this, it's best to use headphones for my own practical reasons. All the moves I'll be making will be subtle, but they'll have a big impact on the quality of your finished mix. I know a lot of people yearn for some magic trick that will result in a massive night and day difference in their mixes, but the truth is that great audio engineers make hundreds of very small adjustments to properly improve the overall frequency levels and balance of the music that they're working on. So check this out here. I've just got two guitar tracks going here and I have uh, some drums in the background here, um, some live drums and both guitar tracks are running through a guitar bus, but there's nothing going on on the guitar bus right now. And right now um, I'm going to mute these EQs that I have going here. Just a left and a right, panned hard, left and right, volume at unity. I'm using this uh, STL Tone Hub, Mark Lewis preset number 21 of PV6534, Mark Lewis here through a Mesa, uh, traditional, mic with an SM57, whatever, just a typical setup there. Uh, both are exactly the same. Um, and here's just a little taste, totally unaffected and everything of what we're working with. So, sounds all right. Um, and again, this is just a DI. Here's what the DI sounds like, just on a solo track. So there's just a little taste of what we're working with. Um, but now here's what I'd like to show you. So I'm just gonna listen to one track here. Let's listen to the difference that this EQ makes with just this little cut that I have going on at three and a half kilohertz. I'm gonna explain exactly how I found that, why, and everything in a moment. But let's see if we can identify the difference of when this is bypassed and when it's not bypassed. So right now, when this is gray, the EQ is engaged and doing its job. When it's orange like this, that means it's in bypass mode and the EQ is doing nothing to the guitar signal. So first, I'm just gonna jam this here and you'll see when I turn it off, you should hear some high-end fizziness and then I'll, I'll engage it again and that fizziness will go away and it'll be, it'll be having you hear it back and forth like that. So watch my bypass when it's engaged and when it's not engaged there and listen to the tonal differences in this upper mid range here you hear like a ch -ch -ch, like this fizziness come on and off here we go right now we're going to start with it engaged and then i'm going to turn it off you'll hear that fizziness and i'm going to turn it back on we'll go back and forth a little bit
hope you can hear that, that there's like a coming and going here. Move to a little different section of the song. Let's just see it right here. Okay, and to take it even further, I'm gonna bypass it on this guitar track and I'm gonna play both guitar tracks together. And I have the exact same EQ on there, on the guitar bus here, okay? So the EQs are not engaged on the two guitar tracks, but what the run routed through this guitar bus, I do have it on the exact same thing. And now we'll hear them together with that same type of test. Again, I'm gonna be bypassing and engaging. You hear that up high? Super subtle, but it's those type of things that build up in your mix. And like I said at the at the beginning of this video here, sometimes you just don't know. So if we didn't have this engaged and we're just playing it, hey, it sounds pretty cool. We just clean it up this little bit, very subtle. In my opinion, it makes a huge difference, but it's something, again, that you just wouldn't know about until it's brought to your attention. Because once you hear it, you can't unhear it. It's like one of these things where if I wouldn't have had any EQ on this and the same, I apply these same type of principles to vocals, to drums, to all sorts of things. It's like, it sounds fine. But then once you start figuring out where the problem areas are, which we're about to do, then once you hear those problem areas and remove them, when you try to bypass that and put it back in, you're like, oh my God, how did I not hear that before? And it's developing a good ear. You hear people teaching this stuff all the time say, just use your ear. And I know that's kind of like, well, how do I just use my ear if I don't know how to use my ear? Well, it's learning just little tricks like this that I'm showing right now that teach you how to use your ear, how to listen for certain things so that you can eliminate them in your mix. If you have a hundred bad things going on in your mix that are all very small that the common person wouldn't be able to notice even one of them, but a hundred of them together will make your mix muddy and not as professional as the next guy who knows how to remove all those things. And those little tiny subtle hundred things he takes away from the mix to clean it up, to make room for other instruments and all those type of things is what makes a cleaner, more solid, more professional sounding mix. So this is just one little trick amongst the many that you can, you'll dive into in your mixing career as you get going. But this is an important one because guitars are important, especially in heavy metal and rock music and stuff. So check this out. Here's how we got to just this little EQ cut that I've made at around three and a half K. Uh, you know, and well, let's check it out. Here we go. So no EQ whatsoever soloing this guitar track. What I do is got this EQ brought up, make sure it's not bypassed. I'm gonna to go to uh, just default it out here. Now, I just happen to know from doing this a ton of times that what I'm, the fizz I'm gonna be looking for is in this upper mid range somewhere here, somewhere from like, you know, 1K to call it 5K. It could be anywhere in here and every guitar and every amp combination is gonna have a different place. That's why you can't just copy the exact frequency I did. I mean, that'll be better than doing nothing, but uh, I'm gonna show you exactly how I find it. What I do is, is I'm going to first lift this up and I'm gonna narrow the cue a little bit. That means the bandwidth that I'm affecting here. Right here, you can see because of these, I'm, I'm still affecting like maybe uh, 2K and 4K. Even know that uh, the, the top of where I'm affecting here, you can see it changing right here, the frequency, and where what I'm affecting there mostly. But because of these slopes in the frequency spectrum there, it's affecting other parts of the bandwidth too. If I make this even a tighter bandwidth or Q as they call it on some EQs here, it's affecting less, you know, and it's more surgical. If I wanted to affect a huge area and just pull this out, now look how much it's of the bandwidth it's affecting. It's affecting all the way down here in the lower mids, even that little much, quite a bit here in the mid range, quite a bit in the, in the uh, upper high end there. So anyways, what we're going to be doing is quite surgical for this technique. So I'm going to bring, make this, my cue very narrow here. And as I, I'm going to pull this up almost all the way, probably it could go all the way. And what I'm going to listen for is what I think is the most annoying frequency I can find. So you're going to, it's going to, it's going to sound ugly. This is going to sound normal with it down, no effect. And I'm going to pull it up and it's going to sound ugly all of a sudden, super ugly in all these areas, but I want to find the ugliest area. And once I find that, 
then I'm going to pull it, that part out. And we'll just be pulling out that ugly area. Be very subtle. But once you hear after we pull it out and we put it back in, you'll be like, whoa, yeah, that was a good idea to pull that out. So let's give that a try. It's going to play it and find the ugliest that what I think is the ugliest spot. And that's part of the cool thing about this is that everyone's going to hear something different, you know, and no two people are affected by the same frequency in the exact same way, you know, but there are some commonalities. So hopefully this, you know, works across the board for all. Here we go. So you hear that that high and in there a combination of I can't even do it with my mouth, but there's this high happening right there, and it's almost got this whistle to it, and it's actually hurting my ears the most at that particular spot, which happened to be 3.49k, which I said 3.5. So you know it's the same guitar part, same rig that when I found it originally before uh, making the video here. So uh, I knew I was pretty much spot on there. But let's let's listen to the difference now that we pull that out. You hear how ugly that is? I could keep searching around, but I'm pretty sure that's the spot. Now listen when I pull it out. much cleaner in my opinion. And one little trick there that I'll show you, whatever EQ you're using, once I found the spot, I'm using the gain knob here to move it down. Because if I were to just grab it by hand, I may alter the frequency. You can always type it back in manually, you know, just click in here. And if, if you're using this particular type of plugin or whatever, you know, every everyone has different controls, but they all kind of do the same thing. But I can type in exactly what I wanted there. But watch this as I pull this down, that's going to change. So I've lost my setting of 3.5K by just doing it manually like there. So when I get back up there, I'm going to move it to back to 3.5K, 3.49. And then I use the gain knob just to pull that down. Therefore, my frequency doesn't change in the slightest. How much do you pull it down? You know, I just kind of go around like there. If you go too far, it'll neuter the sound. Check it out. So that was, it's, it might be cutting out, it's too much. It's just unnecessary to take that much out. So I'm going to split the difference. Let's go about 5, 6 dB, somewhere in there. Well, that's 7.5. So... But that makes a huge difference. So once I've found that, I'm simply going to copy that to my other track. Now they both have the exact same... Curves there. I have the exact same EQ going on in both track, exact same setup. All right. And because these are the exact same tone. Now, if this tone, let's say on the other track, were slightly different, it may require a slightly different uh, touch with, with the EQ there. So it's important to, if you have different sounds, different guitars, different amps, whatever, to go through and find that problem frequency in anything. And again, if this were a vocal, I'd do the same thing. I'd find where the vocal was most annoying and pull a little bit of that out. It might be more than one spot, too. Uh, there might be somewhere in the uh, mid-range area that we don't like, uh, somewhere in the low mid-range. But, you know, that's just taking it further and further. And I felt that the, for the point of this video, just showing you where the biggest trouble area is in distorted guitars, which is typically in the, the, the 2.5 to 5K range, in this case, 3.5, and how to pull that out and how to clean that up significantly. Now, uh, to take it one step further here, how I showed you how I have the guitars routed through the guitar bus, if you wanted to infect them both, the same, then you just pull one of the EQs or just apply the same thing down on the guitar bus. Now, I don't need the EQs here. The same thing is happening through the bus here that the guitars are routed through. So I'm controlling both guitars with one plug-in on their bus. I could compress it here. I could add more EQ. I could do whatever I want. Anything that I do to the bus is going to affect the tracks from within it. So in this day and age, uh, CPU power, in my opinion, isn't that much of a concern, but it's one way to save some CPU power, even though an EQ plug-in like this doesn't use much power at all. But just, just something to think about, that if you want to affect a group of tracks at the same time, just put your effects on the 
uh, bus that the tracks are routed through. You have less individual control then. If I wanted to EQ these tracks separately, I can no longer do that because they have a global uh, effect on them on the route. So anyways, you choose what's going to be best for you to do in, 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 that, in your case. But in this case, it's nice for me because now I can show you the difference muting this again on and off uh, with just one plugin and hearing the whole mix together. I hope you can hear that coming in and out. Let's go to this part again here, and we'll do that every bar thing. Ready? Here we go. So pretty cool. I hope, again, I hope you can hear that uh, and what that's doing, taking out of the guitars there. So just a nice trick that you should apply to all your tracks, just hunting out those, those frequencies. You know, and a lot of people too, just one last thing I'll say here is they think that with their EQs, what they should be doing is boosting everything. But first, get rid of unwanted frequencies then when you want to accentuate or color or boost anything with additional EQs, it's not boosting the, the frequencies that, that you didn't like before. Now those frequencies have been cut out and EQs that you apply afterwards are only boosting the frequencies and the sounds that you liked. So try to wrap your head around that. Before you boost or make something louder, take away from it what you don't like so that you're not bo simultaneously boosting problem areas. I think that is all I wanted to show you today. Uh, if you're curious, this is a song called Deadbolt from my uh, upcoming solo album that I'm currently working on. And I thought uh, as I was doing some guitar EQ here that I would just show you this trick that I've been, uh, I mean, it isn't even a trick. It's not some sequence sauce. It's just a method. Uh, that's part of my mixing workflow that I've been, I was taught years ago and I've been doing ever since. And it's just a really important one that will clean up your mixes all across the board. Again, applying this to multiple different things. I'm gonna show you some more tricks in a follow-up video to this where you can attack some of the low end problems you might be having, some muddiness and how to clean that up. And it's again, these little things like this, little subtle taking, taking away mud out of your low end, taking away fizziness in your high end that makes a cleaner, more pleasant mix to listen to, leaves room for cymbals and vocals that may be living in this 3.5K range. All of a sudden you clear that up a little bit by pulling out this unwanted fizz. Finally, with, the guitar, with these guitar tracks, let's go to this global one. What I would do is, is I would also just cut out a little bit of low end there, and I would listen back and forth and make it so this move that I just made right here wasn't even audible, but I know that it's get ridding, getting rid of just totally unnecessary low end that I could be saving for my kick and bass, things like that. So you know, always high pass just a tiny bit on guitars or other instruments that there's no low end information there otherwise, anyways, other than noise floor stuff and uh, problems. So sorry if I'm getting confusing here, but I'm trying to pack in as much information as I can here. Hope this was helpful. If you thought so, let me know in the comments below. If you'd like to see more, let me know in the comments below. I gotta say that anytime I've done one of these production videos and I've only done a couple so far, there are lots of people that say more, more, more. So that's what I'm trying to do here. Again, I got another one coming up soon on low end. Thanks for watching guys. Check out some more of the videos on my channels. I've got tons of stuff for guitar maintenance and guitar playthroughs, just all sorts of cool stuff. My everything you love show, lots of information in there as well. Thanks for tuning in. Rob Arnold signing off. I'll see you on the next one.